Uh, hello, everyone. It is a real pleasure. Um, Chris is going to introduce me in a minute. But before Chris introduces me, um, there's a rule that whenever I talk to people uh, on the Internet from my living room, um, I have to introduce my cat. It's basically if anyone asks me to do a session, I say yes, uh, as long as my cat comes as well. So this is Bluebell. She's a very cute little cat. That's Bluebell. Um, she tries to hide whenever the laptop comes up. So you're very lucky you get to see Bluebell. I'm going to talk a little bit about Bluebell. Feel free to take a picture if anyone wants to take a picture of Bluebell. And I'm going to put Bluebell down in five. There, Bluebell. Yeah. OK, that's the cats. I've shown you the cats. Uh, I've done my job. Um, and over to Chris. She looks a little bit dismayed, but adorable. Yeah, she's completely dismayed, <laughs> and she's scratched my arm pretty badly. Um, oh dear, she's like my It does dog. not deter me. It does not deter me because <laughs> she is an integral part uh, of the session. She's very much like my dog, when I'm like, just pose for the picture and just runs away. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for joining us for our event. Um, I'm very, um, I'm thrilled to be joined by Joshua Siegel. Um, just to say as well, if everybody that's watching could just have um, either a pen or a pencil and some paper ready for the writing activities a little bit later on. Um, um, we'll need those for the writing activities. Uh, so Joshua is an internationally renowned poet, performer and educator, and his first book with Bloomsbury, I Don't Like Poetry, was nominated for the Laugh Out Loud Award, an award that Joshua has subsequently won twice. And he's also a recipient of the People's Book Prize and has performed at schools and festivals around the world, including the Edinburgh Book Festival, the Cheltenham Literature Festival and the Dubai Literature Festival. He's an official ambassador for National Poetry Day and he's been commissioned to write and perform for the BBC. So we're delighted to have him here today. Just a couple of quick things I want to say. Um, so um, the session is being recorded um, and Joshua's aware. So um, the Q&A, the introduction, etc. will be on uh, YouTube in approximately a week. And uh, we also have, if you want to put in, in the chat box as well, um, where you are... Uh, oh, sorry. Um, if you want to put in the chat box where you are joining us from today, I'll just um, enable that now shortly. And also we have a Q&A box. If you've got any questions for Joshua, we can go through these at the end in the last 10 to 15 minutes. Please do pop those in there. And if you want to pop the name of your school in there as well, that would be absolutely lovely. I'm going to enable the chat box now and I'm going to hand over to Joshua. Take it away. Fantastic. Hello, everyone. Um, you can't see me, but I can see you. It is a real pleasure uh, to meet you. So my name is Joshua Siegel. Uh, I like my friends to call me Josh. My cat's name is Bluebell. Very important. So you saw Bluebell earlier. I will be talking about my cats at some point uh, later today. Uh, so hello. It is a real, real pleasure to be talking to you. I am all the way in London. So for some of you, that might be quite local. For some of you, that might be really, really far away. I'm in my living room. I'm nice and warm, even though it is absolutely freezing outside. And there are basically there are oh, someone's at Wood Green Library. Hello, Sean Edwards from Wood Green Library. Um, OK, so I'm going to talk you through basically what we're going to do today. We're going to start or oh, everyone telling me where they're from. Preston, someone says Bristol. This is amazing. Uh, I've gone truly um, not global, but national. Um, if we <clears throat> Putney, not too far away. So, um, yeah. Basically, there are three things that we are going to do today. The first thing we're going to do is I, um, I'm i going to share some poems with you because I've got um, how many books is that? Six poetry books behind me. Um, I've got lots of books behind me, but those six books you can see are books uh, that I've written by myself because I'm a poet. So I'm going to share some of my poems with you. That's number one. The second thing we're going to do is we are going to do a writing activity. That's number two. So everyone is going to need pens or pencils and paper. Uh, and I should just warn you, the writing activity we're going to do is going to be um, very, it's a bit strange. I've planned a bit of a strange activity uh, for you to do. Um, so it's going to be fun, hopefully. And um, yeah, OK. And the third thing, very important. The third thing is you are going to get the chance to ask me some questions. Uh, and I think we're going to leave maybe 10 to 15 minutes for that part of the session. Um, I won't be able to answer all of your questions because there are hundreds of you 
Um, but I will be able, hopefully, to answer some questions. I should say, if any teachers want to put me on, if any teachers want to tweet about this or take pictures of me, I'm very vain, so please go ahead. So I am going to share with you some poems. I'm going to start with uh, a couple of poems from my very latest book. This book is called Who Lets the Words Out? Um, and I'll give you a secret to start with. I let the words out in this book. I am the person who let the words out. So there are lots of words in this book, obviously. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do a poem to, well, this is a poem all about, uh, this is my first poem. It's called Don't Get Me Started. So I'm going to start with a poem called Don't Get Me Started. And Don't Get Me Started is a phrase that I use uh, when something is very annoying. It's a phrase some of you might know. Don't get me started. Um, or don't even get me started. Um, so that's what this poem is called. Before I do this poem, uh, I want everyone to close your eyes. So everyone close your eyes and I'm going to ask you to have a think. And this uh, is what I'm going to ask you to think about. Um, hello, Cecil Row Primary School in Kent. Um, close your eyes. And this is what you're going to think about. This is your question. What is the most annoying thing in the world? OK, and nobody is allowed to say my brother or sister, because that's boring. Everyone says that. When I count to three, um, I would kind of talk to you and ask for your ideas, but I can't do that because I'm uh, in London and you're all the way across the country. When I count to three, we're going to open our eyes. One, two, three. So this poem is called Don't Even Get Me Started. It's a list of things that I find very annoying. If you, you could join in with this, even though you're uh, far away. Um, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I've just been looking at the chat and there's 52 messages. Wow. OK, I've got to concentrate on the poem. Uh, this is called Don't Even Get Me Started. If I mention something that you find annoying, you could put your hand up. The poem goes like this. When people chew their food too loud. When you look outside and see the clouds. When people fuss and fight in crowds. Don't even get me. And you could say started. When biscuits fall in cups of tea, when mum goes on a cleaning spree, whenever teachers pick on me, don't even get me started. Waiting in an airport queue, when chocolate melts and turns to goo, no toilet paper in the loo, don't even get me started. Wi-Fi signals that get lost. Summer sun that turns to frost. Poems uh, that when you get to the ends and you think they're going to rhyme, but then they don't rhyme. Don't even get me. And you could say started. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Um, I am going to have a sip of, it's normally tea, but it's juice today. That's another thing that's quite annoying when people make that noise after they've had a sip of uh, a drink. OK, I'm going to um, I think quite a few of you are in libraries. I think I'm talking to some people who are in libraries. If you're in a library, feel free to mention that in the chat. And I can if I see it, I can give you a shout out. So this is a poem for libraries. Um, this poem is available on my website, actually. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my web. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my website after this poem. Hello from a library, Abisha Gulati, a website all the way in Delhi. Wow, that is uh, really far away. So I am actually international. I've gone international. Um, that's a real. Uh, that's a real um, surprise. That's a real pleasure. It makes me feel very famous. So this is a poem. It is called "Poem for Libraries." Um, and it is available on my website, which I'm going to mention after this uh, poem. It goes like this. Come to a place full of wonder and light and sparkling stories to brighten your night of tales and fables and beautiful beams that flash in your mind and set fire to your dreams. Come to a place full of horror and dread of demons and dragons that howl in your head, of terrible tigers with blood-spattered claws and lives that are shattered by famines and wars. 
Come to a place full of dates, facts and figures and jokes that will have you in stitches and sniggers. A place you can stroll through the meadows of history, scaling the sides of the mountain of mystery. Come to a place that can sate your addiction to rollicking rhymes and to fabulous fiction. A place you can travel through time at your leisure. A library of pages to treasure and savour. So that was a poem all about libraries. So if you are, if you do have a library in your school, um, one place uh, you can find that poem for free is on my website. And I'm going to do a thing. Uh, I practiced this with Chris before the session. I'm going to try and share my. Chris, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And that looks great. Good. So, you sh so there's a weird thing that my computer does. It switches off the sound when I share my screen. So I've got to press Alt and A to get the sound back on. That's not very interesting. What is interesting, hopefully, is my website. I've got a website. Um, I made this website myself uh, when I became a poet. Before I got any books published, what I did, I put my poems on my website. Uh, so both poems I've done so far are on the website. We've got Don't Get Me Started. So feel free to have a, another look at these after the session. We've got um, Poem for Libraries, which I've just done. Uh, so that is on the website. And I am going to do now a poem which is called I Don't Like Poetry. So this poem was published in my uh, very first book. I can stop sharing the screen now. This poem was published in my very first book, which is called I Don't Like Poetry. And um, I called this book I Don't Like Poetry because I visit loads of schools all across the country. In fact, I visit schools all across the whole world. I visit lots and lots of schools. And one thing people tell me, um, not all the time, actually, but sometimes people, sometimes teachers, they say, oh, you're a poet. Well, I don't like poetry. That's what they say. So I decided to write a book of poems for people that don't like poetry. So what we've done is this. I've done a couple of poems from Who Let the Words Out, which was my latest book. That book came out three months ago. Now I'm going to do a couple of poems from I Don't Like Poetry. This was my first book. It came out uh, about seven years ago. So um, this poem is called I Don't Like Poetry. And this is for free on my website. So you can. Uh, and this is a, um, a very good poem to use as a writing uh, model. If you want to do this, um, you're not going to do that with me today, but you can do it uh, later on. This poem is called I do know uh, it's called I don't like poetry and it goes like this. Chris, can I just double check that you can still hear me? I can still hear you fine. Good. So I just I've got this paranoia that I, I so I've done an event once and I was talking for like half an hour. Uh, maybe not half an hour, but sort of 15, 10 minutes. And I was on mute the whole time. I'm just determined that ne that, that never happens again. OK, someone from Cornwall just got in chat in touch to say hello. OK, this poem is called I Don't Like Poetry and it goes like this. I don't like similes. Every time I try to think of one, my brain feels like a vast, empty desert. My eyes feel like raisins floating in an ocean. My fingers feel like sweaty sausages. I don't like metaphors. Whenever I attempt them, a hammer starts beating in my chest. Lava starts bubbling in my veins. Zombies have a fight in my stomach. I don't like alliteration. We learnt about it in school, but it's seriously, stupendously silly. Definitely, drastically difficult. Terribly, troublingly tricky. I don't like um, onomatopoeia. I wish I could blow it up with a zap and a bang and a crash, a boom and a clang and a pow, a clash and a bam and a thud. And I don't like repetition. I don't like repetition. This this goes on for half an hour. I don't. I'm joking. It doesn't. Um, uh, it could do. Uh, I could use repetition. Who got in touch? St. Mary's CE Primary School 3AH. Hello. Um, another sip of juice time. My mouth feels quite dry. <sighs> Very annoying noise. Um, watch out for it next time your mum or dad or teacher 
has a sip of tea or coffee. I'm going to do a poem from this book, actually, because that last poem, Kestrels and Owls, St. Leonard's, Mansfield Primary Academy. Hello. The last poem mentioned repetition, um, uh, onomatopoeia. And onomatopoeia uh, is another name for noisy words, words that talk about noises. Uh, so, for example, bash or clang or bang or pow. Uh, so I'm going to do a, um, a poem called Zap. And I was thinking to myself, if a Bilton Grange from Harrogate, hello. I was thinking to myself, if I could have any superpower, what superpower would I have? And the first idea that came into my mind, I would like to be able to talk to my cat, Bluebell. I'm going to do a poem about Bluebell after this poem. But then I thought, you know what, Bluebell is really stupid. Um, so I don't think she would say very interesting stuff. Glenley Park Prime, Lindworth, Birmingham, hello. I feel like I'm a radio uh, DJ uh, giving shout outs to all these schools. Fantastic. Um, basically, so, yeah, I don't want to talk to my cat as my superpower. That would be quite boring. The next idea I had, I would love to be able to point at something um, and make it disappear. So this poem is called Zap. You can join in with this. Um, Year three magpies from Ilsham. Everyone, you can join in with this. When I point my finger like this, you need to say the word zap. So let's give that a go. One, two, three. Zap. One, two, three. Wait for it. Some of you joining in without wait. Zap. And the thing about this poem, you have to concentrate very. Zap. OK, for those of you who are guessing, this poem is called Zap. And it comes from this book. One of my. um. Well, so. A few years, this, uh, 2020, I think this book was published. This book is called Welcome to My Crazy Life. And this poem is called Zap. Remember to say zap when I point my finger. One, two, three, zap. It goes like this. Whenever something frightens me, if ever I feel blue, there's something very simple that I'd really love to do. The kind of superpower that would conquer all my fears. I'll simply point my finger and then zap, it disappears. I'll zap away the bullies and I'll zap away the ghouls. And when the weekend's over, I would zap away my school. I'll zap away my braces and the pimple on my nose. I'll simply point my finger and then zap, away it goes. I'd zap away the demons that reside within my head. I'd close my eyes and hold my breath, and then I'd zap them dead. I'd zap away the worries that go on and on and on. I'd take a gulp, then give a wink, and then I'd zap them gone. Whenever I think I missed out a verse, so if you want to read the missing verse, this poem is not on my website. You have to buy Welcome to My Crazy Life. I think I miss out a verse by mistake, but we're going to do the last verse now. It goes like this. Whenever something comes along and brings up all my rage and makes me feel like a tiger trapped inside a cage, I'd really love to zap it. That's what I would love to do. So do not make me angry or I might even. Wait for it. Or I might wait for it. Some of you joining in without waiting. Or I might even zap you. Give yourselves a great big round of applause. Fantastic stuff. Excellent, excellent. I think it is time to do a poem about Bluebell. So um, it's time to do a poem about Bluebell. You saw Bluebell at the beginning. I'm going to try and get her. She always runs away when I do this. So just give me a couple of seconds. I've got a bluebell. I've got a bluebell. I've got a bluebell. I've also got a cat. Uh, the cat is bluebell. This is bluebell. Bluebell. Uh, it's bluebell day. Also, I am wearing blue and purple. Um, I can't remember mo what colour my underwear is. I think they're blue as well. Not that that's very interesting. How old is Bluebell? Uh, she's three. Bluebell is lovely. She's not lovely. She scratches me. Look, she's scratching right now. Um, our teacher's cat, Sally, would fill the screen. Yeah, Bluebell's pretty big. She's a big cat. Ah! Uh, so she that's Bluebell uh, escaping. So when it comes to the Q&A session, um, 
I'm only answering one question about Bluebell uh, because there's probably going to be lots of questions about Bluebell. That always happens. Um, our school dog, Bob, is watching Bluebell. Bluebell hates dogs and dogs are terrified of Bluebell. She's vicious. Um, I'm going to do a poem about Bluebell. Uh, this is a poem from Who Let the Words Out? Bob hates Bluebells. Bluebell hates Bobs. Uh, maybe we should meet up one day and let them fight. Um, I think that might get us in trouble. I've been, oh yeah, but I was going to tell you why she's stupid. She's quite stupid. Her favourite thing to do uh, is actually to fall out of the window. Uh, she likes to fall out of the window. Uh, so in our flats, we're not allowed to open our window because Bluebell is a big, fl furry, fluffy, fat cat who likes to fall out of the window. Um, I'm a bit mean. I love her anyway. I'm going to do a poem about her. Uh, this poem is, uh, where is it? Um, near the back. Yes. Where, where is this poem? Where's my cat? Yes. It's in the shape of a cat. Um, if, if you've got a copy of well, uh, Who Let the Words Out, it's on page 116. It is in the shape of a cat. And this is a poem. Um, I've been I've been really mean about Bluebell, but I actually love her very, very much. So this is a poem about some of the things that Bluebell likes to do. If you have a pet at home who does the same things as Bluebell, after each line of the poem, uh, you can put your hand up. It goes like this. Bluebell. Thank you for crawling across my laptop when I'm trying to work. Thank you for always knocking things off the shelf. Thank you for running outside, realizing you don't like it, and then running back inside. Thank you for curling up like a little cinnamon roll on the sofa. Thank you for scratching the carpet at three o'clock in the morning. This is the most annoying one. Listen to this. Thank you for doing a poo in your litter tray as soon as it has been cleaned. She's looking at me like she doesn't care. Thank you for always cuddling someone else, but never cuddling me. Thank you for always making me think you might be about to cuddle me, but you never do. Thank you for your blue eyes and golden coat. Thank you for rolling on your back for belly rubs. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being, what's her name? One, two, three. Blue be no, bl Bell, not Blueberry, uh, Blue Bell. I was in a school last week and a boy in reception class shouted out, Doorbell. No, her name is Blue Bell. I'm going to do one more poem and then we are going to get started with our writing activity. Uh, activities, I should say. Um, I should, I'm going to give you a little, um, a little hint. We're going to write about food. That's going to be the theme of our writing. We are going to write about food. In a minute, I'm going to ask you to think about your favourite food. Before I do that, I'm going to do a poem about my least favourite food. My least favourite food is cake. I hate cake. I think cake is absolutely disgusting. Cake, awful. Um, this poem comes from this book, Little Lima Laughing. Lemurs are one of my favourite animals. This poem is not about lemurs. This poem is about how much I hate cake. And it is called Don't Go to the Cake Shop. You can repeat that after me. One, two, three. Don't go to the cake shop. And this, boys and girls, is why you should never, ever, 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 ever go to the cake shop. Legs of frog. Tail of rat. Paws of dog, whiskers of cat, slime of slug, shell of snail, pin of porcupine, blubber of whale, beaver's tongue, lion's mane, bark from a tree and goo from the drain, scales of snake and beak of puffin. That is what goes in to, to a blueberry muffin. And that is why you should never go to the cake shop. Obviously, that poem is made up. Um, so that, uh, Des, do I have TikTok? I, I'm not on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> Instagram and Twitter. Um, not Facebook. Not Facebook or TikTok. Okay. Um, yeah. So how long have you been writing poetry for? Good question. 
This gives me an opportunity to share my website once more. I wrote my first poem when I was five years old. Uh, uh, so that was 32 years ago. You can do the maths. It's just muted you again. I think you need to all day. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yep. Good. So this is my website. Uh, please use this website because I, I made it myself and I spend a lot of time designing it. Um, uh, you can you, uh, random fun stuff. Go here to see some work I did when I was at primary school. So let's click on there. That is a picture of four year old Joshua. So that's me with my sister. I'm four in that picture. She is two. This is the first poem I ever wrote. It's about otters. That's the poem. It's a weird poem. It's quite bad. It's, it's, it's rubbish. An otter, look at the spelling. Look at that spelling. An otter has a long tail. And when I say long, I mean uh, very long. At least I got at least I could spell my name correctly. But that is a poem uh, all about otters. 32 years ago. So that is how long ago I wrote my first uh, ever poem. Thank you so much for that. And where did your passion for writing come from? Um, that's a really good question. Um, it comes partly from performing. So I, um, performs my poems for you. I like being in front of an audience. Um, I'm, uh, so I like to write things that I can share with people. Um, and just from lots of reading, I, I've, 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 I've always been a reader first and foremost before I was a writer and, uh, you know, you get inspired by things you read. Hopefully that will happen to some of you. Um, you read things and you think to yourself, I could do something like that. Or with YouTube now, you watch things and you think I could do something like that. Um, so I, I tend to be inspired by things that I've watched and things that I've read. Okay. I am looking forward to the bluebell question. Uh, you know what? We can have two bluebell questions. Okay. We don't have to just have one. This was and if you, can find, if you can find me any like really weird questions, that would be yeah. good. So this was going to be my question and I was going to finish on this question. But since someone put it into the chat, I'm going to ask you, if you were a biscuit, what biscuit would you be and why? <laughs> if I was a biscuit, I would be uh, a rich tea because I'm very bland. I'm very boring. I'm not really. Uh, I don't know. Um, a pink, one of those pink wafers, maybe. No, I would be a chocolate covered digestive. Because uh, I think I'm very tough and very reliable um, and tasty as well. No, thank you so much for that. Um, so we, um, <clears throat> I guess like we've had a question about writer's block and things like that. But um, so I, I will ask you about that in a minute. But what I'd be really interested to know is, um, you know, how, where, like, where do you kind of get your inspiration from? And um, do you have any kind of words to inspire all of the students that are, um, you know, watching. So, yeah, um, during your poetry writing activity, uh, I did a couple of things. Uh, one of them was I asked you to use your five senses when you were taking notes. So I listen to things people say. So sometimes I hear someone say something interesting. For example, the phrase, don't get me started. Um, and I just have a little notebook and I write it down. And sometimes it turns int into an interesting poetry writing idea. Um, and then another thing I did was I shared before I asked you to write a poem, I shared my poem with you. So I get inspired, as I said, by things that I read. Um, so reading is a very important source of inspiration. I also asked you about your favorite healthy food. So it's important to write or you could write about things you don't like, but it's important to write about things you care about, whether you care about it in a good way or whether you care about it in a bad way. It's important to write, I think, about things that you care about. Um, so, yeah, um, foods, animals, words, those are the, the themes of some of my poems. They're things I'm interested in. No, that really shines through in your poetry as well. Bishop Scarf. What type of cat is Bluebell? She's a ragdoll. That's her. That's the type of cat she is, a ragdoll. Sorry, over to you, Chris. No, you're fine. Um, I am trying to... Um, why did you name your cat Bluebell? Sorry, there's a lot of um, duplicates, so I'm trying to like answer them. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, 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 a bit random. Uh, me and my wife um, got a cat and called her Bluebell. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just really random. Um, 
because she's not very pretty. No, she is pretty. Maybe because she's pretty like a bluebell. Yeah. And bluebells are spring time. They come out in the springtime. And bluebell reminds me of happiness and sunshine. There's a question here. So there's, I mean, there was two questions. How do you think about the titles of your, your books? But I guess there was a question as well that I'd be really interested for people to hear. Why did you call um, the collection I Don't Like Poetry? Like, where did that kind of come yeah, from? Yes, so I... I, I I explained that a little bit um, at, the, at the beginning. I called it I Don't Like Poetry because when I started visiting schools as a poet, um, this was when I made my website and I put my poems on the website. But before I published my first book, uh, I, it's, it's just a phrase that I heard quite a lot when I when I spoke to people. Uh, they say or if I meet someone and they ask, what do you do? And I say, I'm a poet. They sometimes say, oh, you know, I don't really like poetry. Um, I also thought it would be a bit of a joke to have a, po a book of poems called I Don't Like Poetry. I thought, I hoped that if people saw that on a bookshelf, they would think, oh, that's a bit weird. A book of poems called I Don't Like Poetry. I'm going to take down that book um, and I'm going to read that book. Um, that was one of my uh, hopes for the book. So, yeah, uh, I just thought it would be quite a fun, uh, slightly strange, uh, but hopefully quite imaginative title, which is why I decided to call it that. No, thank you for that. Um, why, why on earth do you hate cake? <laughs> I don't hate cake. That was a joke. I love cake. Uh, <laughs> I just, yes. You, you, you got to understand some of the things I say uh, might not be true. Uh, sometimes poems can be what's known as fictional, which is when you use your imagination and make them up. Marmite, B. Pollard. Marmite, do I love it or hate it? I love it. I, I really like Marmite. Um, yeah. There are so many questions coming in. We've got like over 80. I'm literally finding all the can you, can you see any weird? Can you see any strange ones? Because I, like, uh, I like strange I'm questions. I'm looking at the moment. We've got the biscuit. Oh, most obscure topping you have had on a pizza. The most obscure topping? Um, I like anchovies, which is a type of really salty fish. A lot of people don't like it. Um, but I really like anchovies. Um, so that's quite obscure. I've had pineapple on pizza, which I don't love so much. Um, yeah. Lo yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm quite boring with my pizza toppings. I, I, I quite like just mushroom, to be honest. Um, and what is Bluebell's favourite food from 6EH? Uh, Bluebell is only allowed to eat cat foods because she's got a bad tummy. Um, so it gives her a bad tummy. She, uh, there's only, and it's dry food. It's not wet foods. Because the wet food smells awful, so we, we don't allow her to eat. It's just they're little cat biscuits, and it's all she's ever eaten. And she she still eats them, and she must be very very bored. Some cats eat something called dreamies, which are which are like a it's things which cats love. Uh, uh, Bluebell's not allowed dreamies. Can I just answer this question to you? Yeah, sure. You and I just saw uh, he asked, "What's my favorite animal?" Um, a lemur. I mentioned lemurs. Um, I can't have a pet lemur because that's highly illegal. They are wild, endangered animals. But this is what a lemur looks like. Um, this is a ring-tailed lemur. So lemurs are uh, <clears throat> my favourite animal. There we go. And, and dogs and cats. Yeah, Lola likes custard creams. Just if anyone else was wondering, I've got a dog and she, for some reason, loves custard creams. Oh, someone said, am I married? And then if so, do I... I didn't cap do I I didn't see the end of that question. Let me just uh is it do I write questions about my do I write oh yeah uh Phoebe wants to know um I can't see Phoebe's question. Uh, uh sorry, one sec. I think Phoebe asks, Am I married? If so, do I write poems about my wife? Um the answer is yes, I am married, and yes, I do write poems about my wife, but they're not really um for children. They're not rude, but they're just not really for children. Um, yeah. No, there is a poem in in I in Who Let the Word Two Well, there's two poems actually about my wife in Who Let the Words Out. One of them is called I Don't Really Like You. Um, and the first line of that goes, um, I don't really like you. And then in brackets it says, I love you. So uh, and then I and then one of the lines goes, You're not my friend. And then in brackets, it says, you're my BFF. Uh, so and there's also a poem about uh, uh, about um, it's called The Power. And I'm not going to explain any more about that other than to say it was inspired uh, by my wife. 
I've got one more. We've got time for one more. So um, is there a poet or a poem that you that that, that is your favourite? What, that I've written? It could be for one that you've written or it could be one from... Yeah, the poem which goes, I don't like metaphors, I don't like similes. Uh, <laughs> I like that poem because you could use that as a lesson to teach people what those words mean. Hint, <laughs> hint. That's the note for teachers. Um, yeah, and, and that's free on my website. There's also a poem for teachers called Let's Hear It for Teachers which is published in I Don't Like Poetry. And you can see that once more um, on my website. Thank you so much for that. I'm just popping a link to your books into the chat. I would definitely recommend you buy a copy. Buy all my books, please. Then I get to eat supper tonight. <laughs> but Who Let the Words Out um, is absolutely incredible. Um, it's definitely one of my favourites. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, re I'm so happy you like that book. No, definitely. It's And also just hearing you as well. I'm sure I wasn't the only one that was laughing with my camera off. Um, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank um, you. I'm going to just pop a link as well to our next event. We've just announced it. So our next event is going to be with um, award-winning illustrator You're Wrong, and we're going to be celebrating Chinese New Year on the 31st of January. So please do come along to that. Um, I'll also send a follow-up email asking for some feedback on the session. Um, so all of your thoughts um, are most welcome, and it just helps us to keep improving uh, the way that we host the events um, and all of the lovely people that we invite to be part of them. So thank you so much to all the schools, libraries, parents, teachers everyone that's um taken part and especially to joshua for for giving up your time and giving us that really lovely my pleasure hi everyone thank you go on my Great. website bye, bye.